Hello and welcome to the virtual concert halls live show. Today, I have the great pleasure of interviewing a concert flautist who is one of the many amazing judges from this year's Sound Espressivo Global Competition. She is a prolific recording artist, and we will be playing some excerpts, of, excerpts from her albums as well, and as well as discussing her journey in her musical career. Thank you for joining us. Joining us, it's going to be an amazing show. So Rita D'Arcangelo is our guest for today and she began her flute studies at the State Conservatory of Music in Italy, in Pescara, Italy to be exact. And she graduated with distinction studying with Sandro Carbone. And she also went to study at the Royal Northern College of Music in Manchester, the International Academy of Music in Milan, and she and also the Hochschule for Music in Mannheim. She also has the privilege of having worked with Sir James Garway, who we will talk about a little bit today in terms of how she he, they both um, managed to have a career in uh, concertizing, recording, and playing all around the world. And she has served for first flute in several orchestras in Italy and abroad, including the Orchestral Academy of Orchestra Sinfonica, uh, after Arturo Toscanini in Parma, L'Orchestre de Jeunes de l'Union European, uh, the University Orchestra of Milan, uh, and all over Europe, uh, including in t uh, places like Spain and China. Uh, she was selected in 2008 to be a member of the Hyogo Performing Arts Centre Orchestra in Japan under the artistic direction of Yutaka Sado. She was principal flautist of with the Hyogo Orchestra from 2008 to 2011. Uh, from 2000. 11 to 2013, she was position of the principal flautist of the CA Philharmonia Gosowska uh, Gorzał Orchestra in Poland under the artistic direction of Piotr Borkowski. And since uh, October 2013, she's a principal flautist with the United Chamber Orchestra and flute soloist of uh, Motion String Orchestra in Berlin. Uh, she has recorded uh, on German radios. She has premiered Rodrigo's Concierto Pastoral in Slovenia. And as a chamber musician, she has collaborated and recorded um, CDs, uh, especially with Italian pianist Giolano Mazzucante and Polish guitarist Jakob Kosciuszko. Uh, she currently serves uh, as... Flute, uh, flute lecturer at the Department of Music at the State University, uh, in uh, State German University BTU Cottbus, and at the Private University Academy for Music in Berlin. And she has recorded many albums, uh, which I recommend you checking out. She is a multi award winning recording artist, and more recently, her CDs have included Solo Bach, which um, has been devoted to the music of J.S. Bach, C.P.E. Bach, um, inspired by Richard D'Arcangelo, where she premieres world recording. Uh, world premiere recordings uh, inspired by her own art and more recently and which is something we'll play for you today uh, she has been uh, able to uh, even during the COVID pandemic record not two but three CDs uh, the third which will it will be a world premiere coming up soon uh, the two are one of which um, is a Telemann which was released this year 2021 and it's 12 Fantasias for flute without bass and we're going to begin actually our show with playing one of her recordings which is really exciting for me and this is a clip from um, 12 Fantasias for transverse flute TWV 40 uh, dot dot semicolon two number one in A major vivace and allegro Thank <laughs> you. 
Beautiful. That was wonderful. I, I hardly ever hear the music of Telemann. It's really wonderful. First of all, thank you for being on the show, Rita. It's very lovely to have you. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, well, let's talk about this first. So in spite of the COVID pandemic, in spite of everything going on, you still managed to record these albums. Can you um, tell us a little bit about Telemann and why you chose to feature his 12 Fantasias? Well, it has been a dream for me for a long time uh, because uh, this Telemann, particularly, I, I used to practice, you know, all my way on, during all my study time you know, because they are one of the most important uh, solo repertoire for flutes that we all have to learn as, as students and then professional. And they, are, they have been very fascinating for me because they're very beautiful pieces of music. Pieces of music. And then, thanks actually to the pandemic, uh, last year I was kind of it's not doing much with concerts and then I said okay let's try to use this time to do something productive <laughs> and something that I really need and dream for a long time so I managed to organize this recording and I'm very happy that I found the, the possibility. No, that's really incredible because I think recordings are a great way to not only develop personally but also professionally. It's a way for people to see that you're still, like you said, productive. Uh, how has recordings, especially this one, impacted the way people see you? Do you feel like you're getting more concerts? Do you feel like there's a value in doing all these recordings? Well, for me, it's like it's the most value, of course, is uh, my artistic growth. I'm trying to see every every record, like, recording likes uh, you know a very special moment in, the, in my artistic life. So you know sometimes I, I go by instinct to see which kind of repertoire I would like to to try to, to try myself in a way, not to see how can you cope, how can you be responsible for these artistic yeah. decisions. And of course, uh, when you are doing this, people notice, which is very nice, of course. And hopefully, they can also give a message, which is my artistic view and what I'm trying to do and the best I can do in order to present my musical ideas and then they will also open some possibilities and usually it does but the first point is not I'm not thinking I'm doing this recording because you know I, I want to achieve this sometimes it's really like this telema was a dream in, in, inside me for a long time then I found this chance okay now is the moment you know I have many dreams many ideas that I hope in the future I can, <laughs> I can, I can do and because sometimes you have to see the, the moment and all yes. And this is music, it's music is just beautiful, I agree. So that's, and you can find everything every every day new, a new aspect, you know, that's that's what the beautiful music does, you know. Every day you can play and you find all these new things. So. 
Absolutely. And I wanted to ask, so you've done recordings of uh, a solo Bach album with J.S. Bach, CPE Bach, and because of Telemann's background in Germany and having actually knowing personally like Handel and J.S. Bach himself, how has all this informed the way you play Telemann? How do you understand this world that he is in? Oh, sure. Yes, the more you play this uh, Bach and Handel and Telemann, the more you, you start to understand the language. Um, so for sure, the the, the recording I did with Bach uh, gave me a, uh, this, a big step forward in the understanding of music of this period. And uh, there are something that I found very different between the two of them. Yeah. So uh, with Bach, is something for me, at least for my personal, uh, it's always very obvious. You know, when I play oh. Bach, I, I've got kind of uh, interesting uh, feeling. <laughs> And yeah. uh, it's just fantastic. You feel in peace with the world, you know. When you play Bach, <laughs> you, you feel that you know the world is just the, the most amazing place in the, in the yeah. universe. And also Telemann, of course, is is, is different. It's more, in a way, more. I don't want to say uh, not so deep because it's not true, but it's different in, in a way of the harmony, the way the structure is. It's, uh, it kind of mm. gives different, different feelings. Yes. Nice. And, and I'm sure you've heard or played Fantasias by Bach. How would you compare those with Telemann's Fantasias? Because the, the, the idea of a Fantasia to me sounds like if there's more improvisation. Uh, there's certain yes. themes that come through, but it's very much, I can go anywhere I want with this and I'll do whatever. And I might bring something back, but I might. Uh, what, how, 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 how do you compare Fantasias? And what do you think of Telemann's Fantasias? But this, it's very interesting because uh, it tried to put some structure which are, are, they were thinking that it was impossible for a solo instrument like a flute, like yeah. uh, like a fug, a sacalia, yeah. you know, the, which uh, you think is <laughs> only one of those instruments. You know? And this time to put all this form inside, it, which for me was very fascinating. And most, and it works actually, because mm. you find sometimes two instruments, two people speaking. Um, it's just two voices, you know, even to the bass and the top. And so it was very interesting. It actually, it gives a lot of pleasure to try to, to make out all this structure of the music. So for sure, it's really genius. You know? at, a, at a risk of being sounding too technical for our audience, I wanted to ask, right. um, how do you distinguish the two voices because it's a single like you said it's a single line instrument um that is at the risk of sounding a bit technical and go for it if you if you want to um how do you make the distinguishment because with, with the piano it's again with there's different tools we can use to change color or to change kind of the voicing what do you do or what kind of techniques do you employ to do that well mostly it's of course as musical um, attitude because for example it's like when you're speaking you know so you are saying something, but the way yeah. there is also another subject, you know, it's like you're making a comma. So sometimes it's <laughs> lying yeah. the tam, tam, par, pom, pom, par. So this kind of, it's like people speaking, actually. Uh, it's very fascinating, you know. And yes, even with one line instrument, you can try to have more people speaking in the, in the, in the <laughs> I mean, we try, we do our best, you know, we don't have the harmony as the... That's true. No, you're right. I think that's very interesting that it's it's more up here. Like if you're aware of it in your head and in the way you want to make the music, then it'll come out. Yes, I mean, uh, I think so. I, and uh, of, then the way it's show, it show by itself, you know, if you are if you have clear in mind, then also the technical skill will follow. Mm. And, and was this the whole part that it was a solo flute works. I, I mean, I know Telemann also wrote uh, uh, concerti for flute and harpsichord and other works with more chamber music. I know you do a lot of chamber music yourself. What inspired you to just do it like a solo album? Yeah, also because it's uh, we have it's the only opera we have in the Baroque time complete. It's 12 fantasy, so you could do really like an album. Oh, and we are not we are not so lucky like pianists or violinists, you know, or harpsichord, you know, organists that thousand of repertoire that can have like an album from Telemann, you know. So that was the idea, 12 Fantasy and it's a complete opus. Uh, yeah. So that's really then that oh. appeared to me. Yes. Is, uh, and is, do you feel like when you've recorded these 12 that, uh, well, for, uh, this, I guess I have two questions. The first question would be, have you ever played all 12 in one go? 
Uh, and then second question is, do you feel like there's a story within the 12? Is there some sort of narrative, rhetoric uh, that you've discovered? Yes, I played the Don't Twelve for myself when I was practicing. I regret I didn't do a concert. I didn't have the chance. I hope a chance might come. I hope so too. Uh, yeah. Because I think it's it's worth it. And uh, yes, I think there is some kind of uh, balance in the you know if you play the old fantasy from one uh-huh. to the third, uh, it makes sense really the way the also the tonalities the way it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's show you know the the the, the keys. So the, yes, I think there is the logic absolutely. It's fascinating. Do you, uh, I guess my last question before we move on from t- I'm, I'm fascinated with this whole this album and everything. Do you feel like Telemann was inspired by Bach or, or inspired CPE Bach or like how, how do you feel like there's any inf- if if there is at all any influence between these composers and maybe with Handel as well? Do you have any thoughts well, about I mean, the so. I, I mean, I, I cannot know. I'm not like so deep researcher, but I would imagine because they were all. They knew each other that I'm sure they had the great respect for each other for sure. So uh, I would imagine that they would be looking what the, the colleague was doing, or <laughs> was writing, was uh, for sure. So I, I'm sure that, that they could benefit from each other. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's interesting to think about how they would have copied each other you know I, I think Bach there's uh, stories of J.S. Bach you know r- listening to a concert of Buxtehude you know going all the way to go hear Buxtehude uh, perform uh, you have stories of J.S. Bach you know transcribing a lot of the music just by sight but now nowadays we just go on Spotify two clicks right, and right, we already right. have the, <laughs> the music well, even, but... like, even he loved Vivaldi you know Bach it's very fascinating so he, oh. he was really fun of the music of Vivaldi so you know it was very far away so that's very interesting yeah, you have Italian influence and the French influence. I think James Bach was very open to these different influences. And speaking of being open, I think that this would, it's a good segue for what you do as well, which is um, I want to talk about the other projects that you do, one of which... Um, let's do this one first. Okay. Let's do the one where uh, it's your 2020 album and you have Fantasias and Romances from the 20th and the 21st century by Eugene Magaliff. And I have never heard of any of these composers except for maybe Fauré and Saint-Saëns. And I just love that. I love that you are highlighting modern composers, but having them write Fantasias and Romances, music that I arguably would say it's a little bit more accessible for people who have never heard much mm-hmm. of new music. It's a little bit more, oh, I, I can I can listen to a romance. And the, the amazing thing is this music is so beautiful. It really is. You and uh, your collaborative pianist, uh, Giolano Mazzocante, recorded these together in 2020. Could you tell us a little bit about this album and uh, a little bit about maybe the piece we're about to play, The Romance by uh, Magalev? Right, okay. So the album uh, was also here a project that we had for a long time with my friend Giuliano, which uh, we played together for many years. And we are from the same city in Italy, so we no longer oh, Yes. Instant bond, yeah, yeah piano, flute, it's, that's yes. lovely. Uh, yeah. And so uh, we are this repertoire, we played some of the pieces many times in concerts. And okay. also I was discovering some composer wrote for me, like the Magali, so that was written for me by Jim Magali. Uh, wow. And then, so, you know, they put in together, together the program was a mix of our old, uh, old fashioned pieces that we played in concert, the new, new discovery. So I think at the end, we are very happy of the result that to bring new music and also uh, in a form, as you said, that, you know, fantasy can be, can be open to many interpretation and romance can be very deep and so, you know, deep, bring also some sad, sadness or hope. Mm-hmm. So that was uh, our goal. And about Eugene Magaliff, he's a good, very good friend of mine. And uh, oh, I was really? guest at his house. Uh, oh, and, uh, wow. And, yes, he was a very, very good friend. And uh, I, I, he showed me this piece for boys, the uh, romance. And I loved it very much, this music. And I said, you know, Eugene, this would be wonderful for people. And then the day after, I just, just in, in the night, he made the arrangement for flutes for me. Uh, and I played in a concert. I was staying with uh, another friend of his family, a pianist. We played concert in, uh, in New Jersey, in Princeton, and uh, that oh, was wow. just, just just wonderful. And to give the premiere, and he was playing at the piano. So, and then since then, I always play you know, in a concert with this, which I really love. 
That's that's amazing. It's so, it's so lovely to actually get to know these composers and to feel like this music is is alive and it's the composer the composer is there and you can play for them and then you can develop a relationship with the composer and get to know them even more. Absolutely, this is a wonderful part of our, of our profession, you know. And you see the art coming out, you know. And I myself, uh, I can do some little, you know, personal composition, but I'm not a composer, I'm a performer. And to have the contact with these people is always very fascinating, you know. The way the the art comes to the you know the mind and the, it's very. I love it. I think. Uh, it's, by the way, I think it's a good choice of fantasia and romance because I think of all the other works, all the other names we call pieces of music, those two kind of evoke something very quickly without, <laughs> for example, like a sonata. We're like, oh, what is a sonata? Right, right, right. Yes, <laughs> what yes. is a prelude? Yeah. And I think with fantasia and romance, it's just, oh, yeah, I know what I know what this is about. And it, romance is so broad. It could be a happy romance. It could be yes. a little sad. It could be melancholic, like you said. And so um, let's play this clip. I, I'm so looking forward to hearing this. Um, this is Eugene Magalev's Romance for Flute and Piano.
Wow. That was so beautiful. Thanks. That was really, really beautiful. Great music, yeah. So I... Yeah. And uh, I mean, uh, our producer was saying, great to hear composers, contemporary composers still writing melodies. And I think that's it's very true. I think we need beautiful melodies. And I, I was thinking this is this could be so beautiful as a maybe a movie film score or soundtrack. Uh, but I think sometimes, I'd, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about this, especially playing beautiful music like this. Sometimes uh, in, in our classical music world, it feels like it's, it's a bit frowned on to play to write melodies or to play beautiful melodies as though it's a little uh, quote unquote cheaper entertainment. But I think this is, there's a beautiful place for it because it really touches the heart and the audience wants to be moved and touched, not always challenged, not always uh, confronted. Sometimes an audience just wants to sit and relax and feel something. What are your thoughts about all this? It's like what I'm doing, you know? People come to concerts, you know, to get some emotions, some feedback, some um, you know, maybe for forgetting the problem, forgiving, forgetting the problems in the life, or to get some some energy. So I think it's yes, for sure. I I agree totally, and uh, and I feel lucky because I I know many composers which feel like this. You know, it is important to touch the people with beautiful melodies and beautiful music. Yeah, yeah I totally do, and I think because the music is um, a little bit less complicated it allows you as a musician to to really make it something your own to really speak through it and have you know put your emotions in and to work with the composer and see what how he felt or which poems inspired him and really understand where the piece comes from and um i i just i just love that uh, i encourage everybody who's listening to check out that album um it's just a fantastic album full of yeah. beautiful music uh yeah. Thanks, may I say maybe just one also a quick word to, to, for thank, uh, to thank also the producer, which is Da Vinci Label. Uh, yes. Been, also in this difficult time with pandemic, you know, it was very, this, uh, Mr. Filippini was fantastic, always supporting artists, this is very important. I think. So, Lovely. Yeah, thanks. I, I am so glad that we still have recording uh people who, like, like Mr. was it, is it Filippi Philipp, or? Uh, Edmondo Filippini. Yeah. Philippine, yeah, what wonderful to to have him to still continue to support. You know, this was released in twenty twenty, and that was a very difficult time for many artists. So, that's great. Uh, just on to the next little topic that I want to talk to you a little bit about, and that is actually personally. Um, so you've worked with Sir James Galway, who's a recording artist, concertizing flautist, and I think your career resembles a lot what what he does. He's te you know you teach, you um, record, you play concerts, and we'll talk a little bit about your upcoming concerts as well. You um, are just a musician. You've played in orchestras, and you continue to play with ensembles and orchestras. Uh, my question is, how do you balance everything? How do you manage your life um, and still get you know a decent amount of sleep? Have you had any kind of advice from Sir James about how to go about doing this? And especially because a concertizing flautist is uh, more of a rare rarity in our world what it, do you have any ideas to share with well, us uh, for sure i mean uh, what is uh, it's uh it is part from sir james just a normal so i'm thankful to him like you know all my life and and of course the the there is dedication to the, the food the music is just incredible and so you know you can just try to, to emulate such dedication and for me also flute was always first first as since i started to play it was always my life so, you know, for me, it's not issue when I have to do concert recording, I just practice and I, I find the time to practice, you know, even with work. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, sometimes I think it's a big blessing because maybe I'm tired and I start to play the flute and then I'm, I'm fine again. You're not tired <laughs> anymore. You're not yeah. tired. <laughs> it's great. I mean, it's, uh, of course, you have to find the balance with your private life, but since, until now, it has been very, very exciting, great to travel, to see many countries, to play. So it's, I feel very, very, very privileged, actually. It's a blessing, for sure. I guess, more specifically, I want to ask you, how do you decide what projects to do? And how do you decide 
what to sometimes say no to. I, I mean, do you ever say no or, uh, 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 or how do you decide, okay, maybe this is not the project I want to work in on right now. I have all these great ideas, like you said, you know, like how, which one do I start to do or how do I discern what to work on? Well, sometimes I, I, some people tell me, so you have to be more on the business side, you know, to be more, to, to understand, you know, that must be a business plan. Or a, but I don't know, I still cannot manage with that. <laughs> I hope maybe one day. <laughs> I always try to see if I find a project that really appeals to me and I see that I can have a music artistic growth, you know, I can yeah. learn something. Yeah. Uh, and then I just go with all my energy, you know. And then wow. sometimes uh, I, I don't mind, it, it doesn't really matter. I don't, I'm not thinking, oh, maybe this will be like a great, uh, you know, possibility of income or whatever. But most of the time, if you really we, you go with all your heart, you believe in something, then it comes also the income. <laughs> it comes also the good possibility of work, you know. So I don't know, it's kind of, uh, I'm trying, it's not nobody's as a, probably truth or nobody's perfect, but I'm trying to, to stay true to my talent. And to to my passion for music, and to you know, to do something that I feel like if I put my time, my energy, my talent, then it's something worth worth it for the public as well, for the people. So also for recording, I always if I start a new project, I think you know, maybe later I'm not here anymore, and then people say, oh, Rita left this, you know. It's kind of, uh, and it is part of my my legacy in a way. I don't know. It's kind of romantic idea of recordings, maybe, <laughs> but still. Um, I don't know. I think that's very true. I, I, I mean, it might sound to some that, oh, it's a prideful thing to want to leave a legacy. But I think that's a very true value that everyone has. That's why people write books. That's why people do paintings. That's why people have albums and recordings. We want to leave something to show that your life has been so rich and so wonderful and that you've been able to play all this music and I think to share that with people later on or whoever listens you know even now is a great thing to do yes and hopefully you know when people would listen you know, are listening you know they get some some part of this you know as performer we are like a medium you know because I'm, we're not composing the music so that we can represent at the best what the composer did and so and every art, I think every artist has also, uh, for some artists, for some musicians, some composers are more near, you know, than others. And I think as a young person, you, you play everything, you try to play everything, but then you start to get your, you know, your feeling for some music instead of others. I think it's normal. Hmm. That's interesting. So uh, my next question for you would be, to like how are you telling your students um and maybe so it's a two-way kind of question the first way is sort of uh what do you tell your students in terms of uh how to prepare for a career or to um you know maybe they're taking auditions or maybe they're uh trying to get to be like yourself and concertize and make concerts and do concerts what do you tell them in terms of advice on how to do all this or and maybe perhaps um in your journey of being a concert flutist, what have you? What kind of advice has really worked for you uh, to make a career? Because a lot of people, I would argue, want something a little bit safer, perhaps, and you know, just stay in orchestra, do your teaching, and you know, uh, maybe not record an album because that takes investment of time. That it's a different time that you have to use. What would you say to people like that? Well, uh, especially. In- I can relate to my students, for example, I always try to inspire them to do the best they can. So to really try to master as much as possible through playing and get inspiration about music, you know, the, all the, the, the various style of music. Um, so this for sure, um, be prepared, be prepared as a professional musician. Um, and then of course you take every chance. So if there is any addition coming up, you try, you know, to try. I, I also remember as a young person, I was trying everything possible, you know. Sometimes it works, sometimes it works. Uh, and for example, I, I really uh, end up in Japan quite <laughs> by chance because I saw this audition uh, in my school. I was studying Mannheim and I, I saw the future was such a beautiful goal. I said, well, maybe I can try to apply. And then uh, in six months I was done playing in Japan. So. Sometimes life is like life is like this, you know. Other times it didn't happen like this. It didn't work. So sometimes I think it's a mixture of 
destiny and but you have to try you know if you stay home you don't this was my first teacher was telling me you no know, the chance they will not come to your house so you have to go out you know to do, you have to do something you know just, if you just sit in home well I mean, the, it is very true so this for sure and to be prepared this is I think, the most important because when the chance comes you have to be prepared you know you have to know you have to be professional you have to know how to play how to behave also it's also a very important part, you know, to be, to be correct with your colleagues, to be uh, supportive in the team, especially in orchestras. And uh, yes, I enjoyed my time when I was playing in orchestra very much, but I always felt, you know, I want to have more time for me. This was always uh, something that from I, uh, all my years in orchestra, you know, that I really want to have more time for me to practice what I want to do. <laughs> Uh, um, and I, our orchestra is great, but of course you have to dedicate a lot of your time to that, you know. Uh, so I think for me, like this with teaching, which I love very much, uh, and uh, with my solo concept, it's working very well. So, uh, well what, thank you for sharing that. That's very, very good insight and advice. I want to highlight something that you said, um, which which struck me, but I think was very important for a lot of people to hear. Perhaps is that you wanted more time for you. You wanted yeah, more time, not you for uh, private. I mean, more time for my free playing, uh, just for me. To no, learn. exactly. No, <laughs> no, absolutely. And I think that's a very conscious choice because you probably felt that okay, I'm doing all these concerts with orchestra. I'm doing all these things outside, but I don't even have enough time to really develop the artist in myself. Maybe it's also stage because uh, I remember, you know, first time I played drums, first symphony or Beethoven ninth. You know, I couldn't sleep all night because such a beauty of the music. Yeah. So and I'm very thankful I had I had the chance to play several years and to play on this one for repertoire. You know that as solo flute is you don't have you don't have a drums concerto, you don't have but you know this is so a playing orchestra is a blessing. But yeah. after a while maybe it was a natural uh, you know part of my development and I said okay this is fantastic, but I want to try it to have more time as for me you know. To, mm -hmm. Because also it's a kind of a bit different way of playing, you know. In orchestra, you have to, you have solo part, but then you have to mix with ensemble, and so you have to be very really careful of all this. And also, if you want to play more solo, it's kind of different, I think, conception, from my experience at least. Mm. Yeah, I, I I like this idea that. Um... Uh, of course, there's no. It's a fantastic sensation of playing with orchestra and playing with people in a big ensemble with a great conductor, etc. But I like what you said about focusing a bit more time on yourself to develop as a recording artist or develop yourself as an artist, because sometimes there is a big temptation to just get an orchestral job, and then you forget a lot of the dreams you might or ideas you had when you were studying, and things kind of just. Uh, be, well, because you have a job and maybe you have a family and maybe you have other things come up and you have a, you have a house, you have a mortgage and all this. Um, do, do, what are your thoughts in terms of uh, having something uh, secure and safe and all that uh, versus making sure you spend enough time to develop what's, you know, your, your, your own personal practice and you're maybe doing some projects of your own and um, taking some risks to do that? Well, I think everybody is different, so everybody has to follow what's inside, you know. So I cannot yeah. say do like this or do like this because for some people, yeah. I have many colleagues, I have many friends in orchestra, they're very happy and I'm happy for them. So they, they you know, their the routine, their life, then they enjoy this, this way of living, so it's fantastic. So I want to try this something different for myself and that's fair enough really say you know that this is better part of the other it's, you know the, it's very diff it's very personal our choice of matter of you you have inside you know and you feel you know you need once so you want to really try the best you can do you know especially because for me flute you know of course it's my my profession I'm very thankful but it's always been a way of life you know and at some point you have to make a living of course <laughs> that's very essential <laughs> uh, right. but my my bigger fear was always that i have to do another job so i cannot play the flute now so <laughs> if oh. i can combine to to get a job and playing the flute it's just perfect <laughs> <laughs> and the flute is such a big part of you wow no that's that's wonderful uh so i want to i'll be missed without 
you know, advertising and promoting a a concert you did recently on the fifth of November, and this was um, a recording a concert for the recording that you did recently, uh, for new music written by three essentials uh, essential elements composers, and yes. there's a lot of them there. Can you tell us yes. a little bit about yes. this project? It's a wonderful project. You know, there are nine composers for eight dancers. And it all came out so here because my friend, the Vasco Pereira, which is one of the composers, uh, wrote for me before. And they, they founded this group of composers uh, and they invited me to be a performer of this, uh, oh, wow. of this, of this association. And so they, they have this project, they, they wrote, all wrote this new solo flute music for me. And so I did, we did the premiere in, uh, last Friday in Berlin at the Academy for Music where I'm working. And this was very special. One of the composer, Gary Judd, came all over from London. So it felt a big honor for me. And then uh, the week before I did the recording, so I also did with, with another CD that is on the, on the way, hopefully. Uh, wow. So that's, that sometimes, you know, that's my combination of friendship and people that uh, they, they listened about my music and said, I want to write for Rita. So that was very, of course, for me, very, I was felt very honored. And I hope that we can have for the project together. Uh, I find this very interesting because it's an international group of composers and they all write beautifully. So, because this is the concept of three essential ele uh, elements that will be the performer, the composer first, sorry, the performer and the public. Mm. So, and then to reach, you know, the, the trinity you reach, the, as we said before, with beautiful music. Uh, not just to be, because you want to be something make only effects you know but really to have yeah. structure to, to, to do the music so that's that's uh, really appealed to me and i'm very happy to be in this part of this project yeah, yeah it's yeah. fantastic it's, it's it's so cool and i i love that even in spite of you know the world <laughs> being the way it is that you have the opportunity to play with people to collaborate with composers and to have these concerts which i think is helpful for everyone and i think the crux of it is that you made a lot of recordings and that just leads on to other things and projects and composers hearing your music and wanting to write for you so you record that and then it just goes on from there and um, before you yes. know it you're just full-time recording artist and performer <laughs> yeah i think it's important to keep doing it to keep doing your way yes for sure. mm, wonderful well, last of all, uh, you are a Soundless Placebo uh, Global Condition judge. And so uh, before my last question for you, I would like to tell everybody about the competition a little bit. And uh, there are five important things to know about this competition. Uh, and please, you know, the deadline is coming up on the 30th of November. So please get your applications in. Uh, our dear uh, guest today, uh, Rita, will be one of our judges. And she'll be able to give just amazing advice and feedback, which is something that's quite unique about our competition a unique part of that we give immediate feedback after you play so a lot of competitions you go out you play you don't know how the judges feel and you have no affirmation but this competition we guarantee immediate feedback after you play and so it's really just an incredible part of this competition so it allows you to know what to work on how the judges felt some affirmation maybe some suggestions and it's really good to get that especially for young musicians uh, we have no time limits for semi-finalists and finalists so you can go about playing uh, the 12 Telemann Fantasias for flute if you <laughs> if you wanted to or 12 uh, you could also and there's also no repertoire requirements so again you can program what you want depending on the kind of music that you like to play or want to explore Floor. We have over $100,000 um, US of prizes, and these are not cash prizes, but value prizes with opportunities, management, graphics design, scholarships and to all festivals and masterclasses and performance opportunities all over the world, including the Carnegie Hall, which is just a really valuable resource for young musicians to discover themselves, to find their own paths and careers. And last of all, just like today's show, it's all live all live broadcasted um, and this is a really important part of it which we want to um, tell you about but also to introduce to the world which you can play at the comfort of your own home or in a hall of your own choosing 
but it's live. It's broadcasted to all the major streaming platforms and people get to hear you from all over the world and it increases your exposure and increases the people knowledge of you. So we're really happy to um, be announcing this. Our website is below <laughs> and uh, we please check out our social media as well at sound.espressivo.com on Instagram. Uh, we also have um, a really wonderful website where you can apply. So get your application in. We're accepting applications until the 30th of November 2021. And with that, I have one last question for you, Rita, before we end the show, and which is um, what would you say are the three or more uh, best ways to prepare for a competition or for a, um, an important performance? Oh, okay. Very interesting question. Um, well, uh, of course, to know the, all the repertoire very well, maybe to give yourself time to learn. Don't, don't arrive the last minute. That's always a bit dangerous. <laughs> uh, and then what helped me in the past days, uh, always to make, to try maybe to make some uh, um, as you say, trial, you know, so you play for friends, you play for teachers, so you say, okay, now the first round, second round, or I, I don't know, for, program for the best audition, for example. And then uh, probably try to, to, to take it as a good challenge to learn a good repertoire and, you know, play it like, a, like a, as a concert. Don't think about it to win, because, you know, I remember also as a younger person, sometimes you get disappointed, you know, you did a lot of work. Sometimes at the time you are happy, but doesn't mean maybe you know there are uh, other duties that were also good as you. You know, it's always a matter of, of situations, and so we have to take like really chance of playing good music for for the public. I think. Wonderful. So be prepared, play for others, and have fun with it. Don't take it too seriously, <laughs> and yes. really oh, yes. just. Mm, I love that. Thank you so much. Well, with that, we're going to end the show. Thank you, everybody, for listening, for watching. Uh, thank you, Rita, for being such an incredible and gracious host, uh, guest. Sorry, And you were just, I love listening to your music. And I encourage everybody to check out her music. She has an upcoming concert on Sunday, the 12th of December, 2021, at 6 p.m. in the Staubenhaus Concerte in Breisgau. If you're, you're in Germany or yes. you're in Europe, please go check it out. Um, what will you you'll be playing with um, your... Yes. Yes, guitar Chapel. partner, right? Yes, mm. yes, a good friend of mine. We recorded also uh, previous albums, and we are preparing another project for the future. So of course. It's, uh, <laughs> Wonderful. It's great to play together this concert. We are looking forward very much. Absolutely. So please check out this concert if you're available. Check out her music, uh, Rita D'Arcangelo. She's all over YouTube. Everything can be heard there. Um, and you can buy her albums on uh, on amazon or any kind of big cd label she's also on spotify please check her out she's just an incredible concertizing flautist uh, i also want to give big thanks to the s uh, san Lucifero competition board and everybody who's behind it all the directors producers especially ante borges kudrix who's my director and producer today and with that uh we have more broadcasts coming to you um the following weeks and uh, we hope you can check out our social media, our website for more clips and interviews. We are amassing such a great bunch of people for our judges and we're interviewing them and talking to them. So please check us out. And with that, we'll see you next time. Thank you everybody for coming and thank you again, Rita. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you to you all. I thank you to the, the organization. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time. No matter where you are or who you are, music connects us all. We started with a dream, but now we are paving the future. Welcome to the Sound Espressiva Global Competition. Fully virtual, yet bringing musicians closer together than ever before, now on a global scale. True live, inclusivity, diversity, connection. An extraordinary array of judges. Get noticed by companies all over the world. Prizes, scholarships, performance opportunities. Apply to be a part of the most exciting congregation of artists like nothing you've ever seen before. We guarantee quality and leave no musician behind. We can't wait to hear you on the virtual stage.